Denver Broncos. Brock Osweiler. Fuck that guy. I, <laughs> I hate Brock Osweiler. You know this. What? Wait. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, another great day to discuss other people's excellence. I'm the unforgettable one himself, Mr. Brett Carroll. Charles is always daydreaming, and we're two guys that like BS and at work. Um, yeah, it's been it's been it's been an interesting day. Uh, it's been so interesting that Charles, I, th- I think I don't know, I think this is another one of those emotional support pods for him, and that's fine because I'm going to need some emotional support. I've had a day. <laughs> uh, I've had a day, and on top of that, my season's over. Like my season is over. I'm just, I'm just distraught. I'm distraught, and I'm pissed off because it's not fair. And I know nobody gives a damn about my fantasy team, but we're all family. There's only like ten of y'all to listen to this anyway, and I, we, we know all of you. We're all family. Um, like. My thing is, why does my team get the injury bug every year? Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, here, I'm going to cut you off here because okay. I have one thing to say about fantasy. I feel nothing because I played Tom Brady instead of Patrick Mahomes. And I would have won because that seems safe. Tom Brady in a division game. And it wasn't. Tom Brady always plays bad against the Saints. You should have known that. Always played bad against the Saints. You should know that. Anyway, there's actual football. I we think that actually happened this week. I'm I'm, I'm dead. I don't I'm feel nothing for you. I'm getting to that dead. Let me, let me just let me just, just let me just let me just let me just get this off my chest. All right, because it's not fair. And here's the thing. Normally, I say, yo, I could have won if I if I, my team was hurt. No, no, no. This year, my team actually was good as shit. Okay, actually, we were eight and one before Derrick Henry went down. Uh, and the one loss was my fault. I did some dumb shit week one. I was being arrogant, and I shouldn't have done this. Otherwise, we'd be not enough um, before Derrick Henry went down. And you're going to laugh, but Antonio Brown injury fucked me up, too, because he was also part of a big part of my team, and he was playing well before he got I hurt. I drafted him in the second round. I did, not, I, hope, I did not draft him in the second round. I got him, like, the eighth round. The point of the matter is he was playing well, and then he got hurt, and then he got suspended. But really, besides the injuries, the fucking Panthers ruined my ruined my fantasy season, and they ruined my football season in general. That offense is god awful, god awful. And the funny thing about it, the ironic part about it is where I really screwed up when I drafted my team. I had Derrick Henry, I had Najee Harris. In the third round, everybody started taking wide receivers, and I panicked. I shouldn't have panicked, but I panicked. And I took DJ Moore over Joe Mixon. And everybody's going to say, oh, my God, why do you take DJ Moore? No, fuck y'all. DJ Moore, despite the fact that the Panthers offense is the worst in the league, I don't care what anybody has to say, that's the worst offense in the league, DJ Moore was still a top 15 receiver this year. That's how good DJ Moore is. And I keep saying this, the dude is a star. He's the best receiver we don't talk about because he does not have a quarterback. The numbers this guy would put up if they got an actual quarterback – in Carolina would be insane. Insane. That's how good he is. He is a legit staple on my team every single week. And it sucks because he should, you know, he gets me double digits every week, but he should be putting up, you know, 25 plus points like like the other superstar receivers of the league, but they don't have a fucking quarterback. So the Panthers suck. And, and it's and it's just annoying to watch them at this point because it doesn't matter who they put in at quarterback, they're not good. And they have all this money wrapped up in quarterback. And I see all these mock drafts with them drafting a quarterback in the top 10. They're not drafting a quarterback, guys. Like, please use your brain, like, and stop just assuming everybody is just drafting. Like, just stop. This team needs an offensive line first and foremost. They might have the worst offensive line in football. I didn't think that was possible, but they might. Hmm. It's up there. And they have so much money wrapped up in the quarterback position already. They cannot afford to draft and pay a first-round quarterback. They are either going to run it back with Cam Newton and Sam Darnold, which is probably the most, well, it was probably the best, most realistic option. Or they're going to on the XFL, bro. Or or they're going. PJ Walker's not good either, and, and they're better and they're, than Cam. 
No, he's not. If he was better than Kim, he'd be starting. Trust me. Uh, or they would be, or they're going to try to get Deshaun Watson or Russell Wilson. But again, I don't think that's realistic. They do need a quarterback, but they need an offensive line first and foremost, and they need an offensive coordinator. Cam Newton, to me, has looked better. The problem is he doesn't know the offense, and you can tell. And you can always tell because, you know, you always hear about how a team scripts their first 15 to 20 plays or whatever. The Panthers' offense looks good for the first drive or two. And then the rest of the game, it's like they're not even prepared for the week. So once again, you can tell he just does not know the offense yet. And let's be honest, he's still Cam Newton. He's going to be inaccurate at times. He's going to make bad decisions at times. So that does not help. Sam Darnold has been a shit show all year. We know that. Again, they're paying him next year. So he'll be back next year. I think they'll bring back Cam as well and just kick the tires on trying to see if one of those two guys can be their starter next year. But they got to figure some things out offensively. They have too much talent on that side of the football to be this bad. And I understand their offensive line is bad. I get it. But my God, this is one of, as much shit as we talk about the Steelers, the Steelers offense is at least manageable. It's not great by any stretch of the imagination. It's not that good. But week to week, it's like, okay, they could at least put up points. The Panthers offense, it's like, my God. Like I said, it's the first drive, they look good. Then the rest of the game, they're they're lucky to get over the 50 yard line. It's 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 insane how bad I just are. I just need to point out it was uh November 17th when we dropped a pod entitled Cam is back. And there and the hype was real. And here we are, and you're saying about five weeks later that. You're not, you have so much money tied into the quarterback, you're not in the position to get a better quarterback. And when you have more than one quarterback, you have no quarterback, is how the adage goes. So, what you're kind of saying to me here is Sam is definitely not the future, and Cam isn't good enough to be right now. I mean, this year is done. You're gonna, I, I would say, bring back Cam next year. You obviously, Sam's gonna be there next year and see who could and, and have him compete for the starter. Cam, like I said, I think with Cam, it's just he just doesn't know the offense. He, I mean, which is fair, he got there midway through the season. You know, what I mean, that's kind of hard to figure it out. And then they fired his offense coordinator like two weeks later. So, and like I said, the first 15 plays or so, he looks good. The rest of the, the, the game, he looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. So that tells me he just hasn't learned the playbook yet. So, again, it's, you know, if you believe that once he learns the playbook, he'll be fine, bring him back. Sam Darnold's coming back regardless. Like, he's already going to be on the roster next year. You're not going to cut him because I think they owe him $19 million next year. So he'll be there. So you might as well bring back Cam Newton to see who which one of them could be your starter. But, I mean, even last week, they scored 14 points. That last touchdown was garbage time. Like, the game was literally over when they went down the field and scored a garbage time touchdown. Other than that, the rest of the game, one touchdown. That's it. And it's like this team just cannot produce good enough offense to score points or even move the ball. It would be one thing if it was one of those teams like they're one of those teams where – they can get it up and down the field, but they just can't score. Ironically enough, uh, ironically enough, they are a good red zone team. They just can't get in the red zone. <laughs> they just can't get in the red zone. Ironically, with Cam Newton and the, and the RPOs and the, the receivers that they have, they actually are a decent red zone team. When they get there, they just can't get there. So, which is rare. You rarely see a team like that where they're good in the red zone but can't get in the red zone. Yeah, but what, what, what is the percentage of their red zone? If you're in the red zone less, and you're but you have a good percentage, you know, it could be a misleading type of stat where if you've only been in the red zone 10 times in the last 10 games, you know. No, it, it very well could be. But usually if you're a bad enough offense, you can't even score once you get down there, right? Most teams, even when they get in the red zone, if they're that bad – they're not even scoring. You know what I mean? We know plenty of teams like that. Um, so it's it's just weird. When they get there, they're usually they're usually scoring touchdowns. They they just can't even get there. 
well, for the season, I pulled up the stats real quick. Uh, you know, five and what is it, five and nine? Uh, they are right now, they have 272 first downs on the whole season. Uh, 101 of them are by rushing, 146 are by passing, and only 25 are by penalty. They, they have converted 67 of 189 third downs, uh, compared to 67 for 179 against opponents. Like, and the and, and as far as that, you know, the, the opponents have gotten 94 first downs by rushing and 133 by passing. So it's not like your offense is, you're, you're pretty, you know, your offense is as good as what they're giving up. So if you suck. The, the defense is a top five defense this year. Yes, but that's, that's the irony. Sad. That's the that's irony here. I'm looking, you know, it, 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 the Panthers and the opponents. <laughs> pretty much your defense is is the only thing that, you know, at least you got that going for you. Well, no, but that's – and, again, that's the thing. This team is not that far. I said it last year. The reason why they got rid of Teddy Bridgewater is because they felt they were a quarterback away from competing. They were in a lot – They, I think they had, like, eight one-score games last year. No, this is so weird. 36 sacks, 36 sacks. Like, uh, passing yards. It's all – it's, like, almost identical breakdowns on both sides. Close it's, enough, it's, you know, not identical. It's just identical, but close enough. You know what I mean? Right, like, but, but that's but that's what I'm saying. It's your defense has actually given up less passing yards than, than uh, the Panthers have, and there's only about 230 yards difference. Right, uh, and, and that's what, like the defense has been. The, they were the number two ranked defense, I think, all year. That that Buffalo game probably skewed the numbers because they gave a 31 points to Buffalo. But the point of the matter is, the defense has been elite. And the defense has been hurt and still been elite. The, like, the problem is this offense is just that bad. And it's really coming down to the quarterback. So I understand why a lot of people are saying, oh, they should draft a quarterback. But the problem is they need an offensive line more than anything else. If they get their offensive line, even the bad quarterbacks that they have will be better and they can run the ball. Chuba Hubbard, again, back to my fantasy team. I had Chuba Hubbard. He was, <laughs> he was unstartable. He was unstartable. That's insane that a starting running back is not even a guy that you can start on your fantasy team. That doesn't make sense. It means he's it whack. Sorry. Right. Like, it's the, – the, they cannot run block. They cannot pass block. And, and the problem is, is a lot of it is coming from the from the uh, the guard and center position, which is, like, the worst. You, you know, as a quarterback, you want to at least be able to step up in the pocket. They need help on that O-line. Bad. And they also need a quarterback. Because as bad as that offensive line has played – the offensive line is not the reason why guys are missing wide open throws. It's not the reason why guys are making bad decisions. It's not the reason why guys don't know the playbook. Okay. The offensive line is, it's been bad, but it hasn't been so bad that I, it's not one of those things like, well, you, if you put Patrick Mahomes behind that offensive line, he wouldn't be. No, it's not that bad. It's bad, but the quarterback play has to be better too. But point, again, okay, I got, I got uh, some info from a real Panthers fan. Uh, Brandon, with his, you know, he's, he's in our franchise league. He says they're an O-line and a QB away from being legit. The defense can hold its own until the fourth quarter. The offense is just too blitz to be able to do anything. Everyone hates the coach, but he even said it's a three, four year process to rebuild the team. And it's showing because the defense did a complete 180. Now the offense needs love. So, Okay, real Panthers. I just said the same thing. I'm just saying I wanted to give you some credit. You sound okay. like a real Panthers fan. I am a real Panthers fan. Thank eh, you. You have a Steelers hoodie on. You can't say that. Listen, I don't care. And I was gonna get to Matt Rule. <laughs> and I was gonna and I was gonna get to Matt Rule. Matt Rule has a lot of Urban Meyer in him where he seems to be he seems to do a lot of finger pointing. And when he even when he points the thumb, it seems like he points it like this and not like this. He's like, Yeah, I'm pointing the thumb. Yeah, it's my quarterback's fault. And yeah, and, and I understand that like he threw Cam Newton under the bus last week. And I understand that the quarterback play has not been great. But Matt Rule, this is only your second year in the NFL, bro. Humble yourself a little bit. You haven't proved anything to prove that you are a great head coach in this league yet. And again, I understand. Now, for the people who say fire him, no, don't fire him. His staff is doing it again. They, I think they've killed it the last two drafts. Now, this year, uh, Brady Brady Christensen hasn't really panned out. Chuba Hubbard hasn't really panned out. Terrence Marshall hasn't really panned out. J.C. Horn got hurt, so we don't know. But he was looking good before he got – this year we don't know yet on the draft class. But, again, that defense, a lot of those are young guys that they drafted two years ago. The defense is solid. They have playmakers on offense. 
They need an O-line. They need a quarterback. The quarterback's going to have to wait, though. They have way too much money tied up. And the good thing is it's not long-term contracts. Like I said, Sam Darnold, you're probably going to have to bring back Cam Newton on a one-year deal. So you have money wrapped up, but that's just for a year. Get your O-line together. See if, once again, this quarterback class, your quarterbacks are the problem. And if they are the problem, unfortunately, we're, you've already proven two years in a row now, your quarterbacks are so bad that you can't even win games. You'll be a top 10 team anyway next year, and you'll be able to draft the quarterback that you need. So I just don't think it makes sense to do it this year only because the quarterback class isn't that good and they already have so much money tied into that tied into the quarterback position. And and they don't I don't think they want a rookie quarterback. They want to win now. This is a win now roster. It's a again, top 5 defense. They have playmakers on offense. Like I said, DJ Moore is a star in this league. If he had a quarterback, more people would know about him. He's that legit. Um, like I said, he was top 15 receiver and his offense is garbage. And yet he's putting up top 15 fantasy numbers. And you and anybody that plays fantasy Who's your you fantasy know, numbers. No, but I'm saying it, think about that. There, how many wide receivers are there in the league and he's still putting up top 15 numbers? And by the way, it's not like he's getting yeah, but that but, but fantasy numbers aren't always what to go off of, dude. Like one of my uh, most clutch running backs ever was Thomas Jones. But Thomas Jones was a good running back. He was a good running back, but he was it wasn't like, you know, some you know, that's not like the greatest running back of all time. No disrespect to Thomas Jones. Like you could be a, a great fantasy player and just be an, a good player in the league. Well, no, but think, but, think about, right, but think about for a wide receiver, it's catches, yards, and touchdowns. And I just said he ain't getting touchdowns. So that tells you he gets a lot of catches every game, he gets a lot of yards every game. So what I'm saying is. This is a guy that's very productive, even on a bad offense. He's very productive. Imagine what he would do if he had a freaking quarterback that that wouldn't miss him when he's wide open on third down, which happens every freaking time, which wouldn't throw, throw uh, turn the ball over every time you're starting to get momentum, which can find him in the red zone. Because like I said, what, usually when they get uh, uh, touchdowns, it's usually Cam Newton running for a touchdown. I figured it out. I figured out how to fix – Carolina Panthers and help the Giants and everybody wins. We trade the Carolina Panthers, their hometown kid, Daniel Jones. Absolutely not. For next year's first. Absolutely not. Why not? Yeah. If the Panthers did that, they would be smoking dick. There's no way. And I don't even curse on this pod. There's no You've been way. cursing on this pod and I've just been letting I didn't want to acknowledge it because I'm like, yo, he said fuck at least twice. So like yeah, yeah. No, that's how pissed off I am. That's how pissed you also off. Also, me off. Actually, like recording. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I saw, I, I saw the red dot. Yeah, no, this, this is how pissed off. I told you I've had a day, and you, and you mess with me. This is, this is, this is what I'm saying to you. It's, you did have a day, people. Like it was one, of, it was like just one of those days. Like nothing's going right type of day. Like the yeah. fact that he's didn't curse me out already for just smiling, I'm actually kind of like happy because like he was just looking at me as, as we started. I'm the one smiling. He's like, "The fuck you smiling about?" It's just it's it's just I, I mean seriously, they're so they're as bad as what people thought the Steelers' offense was going to be. That's how bad this. That's how bad the Panthers. I mean, okay, just to be objective about shit we said on the pod, we, me and you were getting into the idea earlier this year that the Panthers could actually go on a playoff run. We, we said that on this pot. So now I don't want to make it sound like, Oh, I'm the one that's saying like, Oh, I told you so. I told you so. No, not at all. But like ask Brett, I'm kind of a realist when it comes to football, especially when my team sucks. And a couple like, it's been like what, five weeks. I've been like, yeah, at least not over five weeks. It had to be like, cause they, they won. They started off like two and one. And then it was all downhill from there for the Panthers. Uh, they started off three and zero. Three and zero. It was three and zero. I couldn't remember. It doesn't matter. That's like everyone. Really, I don't remember because it doesn't fucking matter. When you're a bad team, it doesn't matter how you start off. When you know you suck. I'm a I Giants see, fan. Y'all hear me every week. It might have. It might have been four and zero. It was yeah. something decent. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, cool. like they it doesn't matter. Four, they start off four and zero and then have won one game since. It's insane. It's insane how bad this offense. And again, it's all the offense. They haven't played good teams. They haven't played that many good teams. Like, like that, and that's what sucks too. It's like you couldn't even take advantage of a bad schedule. Like you, you can't even ask for their schedule to be 
better next year. Even though, even though they might, even though they're gonna have a, a third place or or even a fourth place schedule again next year, fourth their, place. Their, their schedule might not. Well, it depends on what the Falcons do. Uh, actually, no, yeah, the Falcons, the Falcons have won the last two games. Yeah, so yeah, they're gonna have a fourth place schedule ne- next year. You still don't know if their schedule is going to be as easy as it was this year. That's how bad their schedule was, and they couldn't even take advantage of it. And that sucks. Like, and, every, and that's why every week I said, "Oh yeah, if they get if they get together, they could go on a run. If they get together, they go on a run. They get together, and they never got it together. It's just insane that no matter who they put back there at quarterback, this offense is just that bad. And maybe maybe it is just the offensive line, but again, they got to fix that line before they even think about quarterback because they got money wrapped up in the quarterback position already. And this and with the I think right now if the draft were to start today I think they have like the six pick in the draft there's not a quarterback in this draft you're taking six overall like that would be foolish to do that take take there will be offensive linemen that you could take take the best offensive linemen available and, and see where you go from there like it's just it's just that simple you, you take you take the best offensive linemen available and, and you continue to try to build that O-line because once you build that O-line, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully the, quarter, the, the quarterbacks you do have will play better. And if they don't, then you could always go and trade for the quarterback that you need. Everybody, uh, I just want everybody to know that Brett also wanted to, uh, me to start paying attention to uh, the draft for my Giants because we suck and got two high picks. Uh, thank you, Bears. And I said, no. And he's like, why? And I just said, because they're lying. Like, like right now, not that everybody's wrong, because there's a bunch of good scouts that if you go through the years, you could find a consistency or some type of trust that you recognize that you would follow this scout. I'm not saying that we have them for basketball, both me and Brett. We have our guys that we just trust every draft. that we're like, ah, when they review a player, we believe them. But when, especially when it comes to the NFL and the overabundance of just bullshit out there because of the agents, the teams, everything that gets reported from like the, the trusted people, the, the, the Schefters, the Todd McShays, yada, yada, yada. It's all bullshit. Like, I, I just don't trust it. Like, like so something I like doing is going back and looking at these drafts. And right now, as you're talking about these pieces that you need, there's going to be completely different names come time of the draft and, and we're going to be hyped up over them and so on and so forth. It's the same process every year. So right now it's the worst feeling. And I'm not, I, I said all that to say this right now, it's the worst feeling because you want to look towards the future and you're too far out. None of the bowl games have even happened. Cause even though it's just one game, some guys get paid off those bowl games. You could have had a meh season. You, you show out in a bowl game, if you're a corner and you get three picks in a bowl game, you, your, stat, your stock just went up in the draft. If you're a defensive end and you had a couple of sacks throughout the year, but you had that one three sack day in a bowl game, shit, you might be up a whole nother round. Like, and it doesn't make you better. That's the crazy part, right? We just get hyped. We feel better. We Like, how much did the, the Jets fans feel they won the draft? And me and you were over here, like, not trying to hate on the kid from BYU, but also, like, where the hell did he come from? And, and that's all I'm, I'm trying to remind everybody right now that's a fan of a shitty team. I'm a Giants fan. I'm talking to Jets fans, well, too. Well, also, like, that's why – that's what, to, to answer your question, I say you should pay attention to stuff because what I, what I do is you try to get a consensus, right? Mm-hmm. If you get a consensus, okay, I don't ever look at one draft class and say, oh, this guy says we're going to take this guy. Or, oh, that's what we're going to – like, no. You try – especially in, the, in today's age, everybody's got draft, mock drafts and everything else. So you go from the – you know, lonely YouTuber like us to all the way to the professionals, all the way to CBS. If you get a consensus of like who it will at least be in the mix of top 10 picks, you do get an understanding because that's not going to change, right? Yeah, you might have one guy come out of nowhere and rise or one guy fall. We still haven't done the combine yet. So I get all that. But this is around the time you do want to start paying attention to that stuff because that's important too. Like, wait a minute, this guy was so was so big why is he falling? Why is he rising? Whatever, whatever, whatever. Because that's important to know when when you're trying to evaluate who you think your team should pick. Um, no, I, I agree that there's a consensus, not even on the top 10, because like that's misleading in a way. That kind of means consensus in the order of the draft. I feel like you're right in the sense that you could find a consensus on the top 10 more or less players in the draft, right? No, that's what I'm saying. That's what yeah. I meant. Not top, yeah, but, top but, players. Yeah. But, in that, right, and, this, and that's what I mean for my team specifically now. You're right. That's a good point. 
about the consensus and you and you can kind of feel safe and these are the best players available uh at least that we can know from all the scouting and shit but for me personally when I, besides defense right i feel like i i have a better shot at, at telling you a good educated defensive pick when it comes to offensive line which my team needs I just feel like unless your job is scouting, unless your job is offensive line, that's one of the only positions I let the football guys completely put their nose in the air, be pretentious as fuck about. Head coach is less so. Like you're, 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 you manage other managers. You're not, your job isn't that complicated. Calm the fuck down. Like when it comes to OO line and getting those guys right in the draft, though that scout is the most important scout. Like it's that and, 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 and defensive and uh, defensive secondary. Those two, all those positions, guys like us, uh, short of literally making it our life, like we just start looking at the film like that, we don't know. And the consensus is going to be whatever offensive lineman got a good agent. Like, we have ideas, but we really don't know. Like, one of the only people that, that the, the Giants, the Giants like haters even say we should keep is Thomas, and we, we overreached on him. So what do we really know? Like that's all. Like I mean, he's offensive been, line he, he's is been playing better, but still the guys that were drafted behind him were better. No, but you know what I mean. But like he's still he's turned into a starter, and at the same time, the fuck do I know about offensive college? Like like how many offensive lines do you watch? You watch college more than I do, and and even you go, yeah, I don't fucking, you know what I mean? Like this this LT so, out of Iowa so, looks awesome. Not this yes. year. I remember Tristan Worfs. That was the only offensive lineman. Oh, oh, oh no! I was, well, the funny thing is, there is a guy from Iowa who Tyler Linda on the center. That's when you said, "That's oh look, look at you! You haven't paid attention." <laughs> so <laughs> well, I wanted to clarify too, because 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 well, you all right. So usually, what I do is okay, because I don't again, I don't pretend to watch college football like that either. So when they talk about this kid, this kid, this kid, I go and just do my own research. Like, okay, this is a kid. Let me watch his highlights. And and now and I, I could determine if this guy's uh, worth the hype or not. Um, but everybody I, looks good in highlights, man. You know how many times I've been I was hype. You remember uh, like two drafts ago from the Giants draft? I liked almost every pick we did. A couple of those guys are still decent on the defense, but overall, it's just well. See, for me, I guess for me, like I'm when I watch highlights, I'm not even looking at like, oh, okay, he looks good here. I'm thinking to myself, okay, is he doing this shit in the NFL? Like, the biggest example for me was Johnny Football. Like, everybody was raving about Johnny Football, and I'm looking at him like, bro, y'all realize he's not going to be doing this in the NFL, right? He's literally jumping over people and running around in circles and literally throwing a ball up in the air that's in the air for like six seconds, and then you see Mike Evans just sitting there waiting for it, and he just jumps up and get it. And everybody, and you know, John Gruden was on the record saying I'll take Johnny Football number one overall, and all these other people were saying Johnny Football, and the Cowboys wanted Johnny Football, and I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying like, what, like, what are y'all seeing in this kid that makes you think that he's going to be an NFL quarterback? This is not. I remember Skip Bayless saying, uh, whoever will rue the day if they don't draft him number one. He's gonna then he's gonna go to the Jaguars. Like, oh yeah, the Texans should take him. And then he's going to go to the Jaguars, and he's going to he's going to be your nightmare in the division for the next ten years. Da, 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 da. And I remember sitting there like, and I and I was a Johnny football fan in college. I, I like I I I follow Bama when it comes to the SEC schools, and seeing him beat Bama, I was like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Like, so it was crazy to me when people were hating on him in college. I'm like, this is when you enjoy this type of player. And then I hope he's I hope he's good in the draft. I know I'm gonna have fun with him and Madden at least one year. <laughs> like it's just, but he's such an after like it's crazy to me too, because he unless you experience unless you experienced it, it's hard to tell people how big of a deal Johnny football was at Texas A&M. Yeah, and I cool. wish this draft had a Johnny football, man. For all the you know, I hope he's good. I hope he's beating his demons. Like he had some real addiction shit going on so hopefully he's he's doing better now he tried a couple comebacks and that ain't work so i hope he's doing better because he was a rich kid and when you have that much resources addiction is not exactly the easiest thing to get over but with that being said there is no johnny Fo- like even if there was a johnny football that wasn't a good pro prospect at least that's exciting like well uh, I mean, shitty teams what? don't even have the prospect of a johnny football to take 
I the mean, first Malik one. Willis, Malik Willis from Liberty, and I've only seen one game of Malik Willis, but I was not impressed at all. And I don't see why people are are still saying he's the number one quarterback in his class and his ceiling is so high. And once you get like, yeah, y'all said got a good same. agent, bro. You got a good agent. I mean, but I'm talking about even like YouTubers who like aren't obviously aren't getting paid to, to say these things. Like, wouldn't say don't say obviously. No, you're right. I shouldn't say obviously, but I'm saying YouTubers who I don't think is getting paid to say these things. Like because because they're like us, me and you aren't above watching a couple of highlights and falling in love with a player. We're fans. At the end of the day, we're just fans, right? And so 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 sometimes you, you watch some YouTube videos. I don't see it. I just don't. But that's my I, point. You don't see it, but they watch a couple of highlights. They watched a couple of games where they thought they made an incredible read or made an incredible play that was intangible and yada, 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 X factor and every other bullshit rhetoric you're going to hear until the round seven of the draft. It is, it's the same thing every year. It's the same thing every year. It's the same. Pick a people. random year. Just pick a random year. I want to. No, I want to. Well, well, to your point, it's the same people that said the same thing about Zach Wilson, and I'm like, guys, what year was Johnny Football? 2014. And it's like, guys, this is this is BYU. Like, relax. <laughs> like he's doing this. At guys, BYU. this is BYU. Yeah, BYU. That's where that future Hall of Fame Jets quarterback came from. That's what, but that's what I'm saying. That Zach Wilson. That's what I'm saying. It's the same people are saying that. And then this guy's at Liberty. I'm like, he's he's yeah, like Liberty. not even like I I don't know. I I don't know. It's and quarterback is overanalyzed. And Do you remember who went first in the Johnny football draft? Yeah, uh Clowney. Beautiful memory you have there, sir. Do you remember who went fourth or in third? Uh what team? What team? What Jacksonville team? Jaguars. Uh, Blake Bortles. It was Blake Bortles. Well done, sir. Yeah. And, and after him was Sammy Watkins before Khalil Mack at number five to the Oakland Raiders. Mm-hmm. And how great is Blake Bortles? That's that's one of the examples I, I wanted to bring up because every time I hear about, well, you took a, a running back second overall. Yeah, and when is what Blake Blake Bortles is the type of quarterback that goes third overall when you just overvalue quarterbacks. How good was Blake Bortles? He was supposed, that, to, be in, he was supposed to be the next Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, again, you, UCF. It's it's hard, and I'm not. And Ben Roethlisberger went to Miami of Ohio, so I'm not hating on small schools. Although I do hate Derek Miami. Carr went in the second round, thirty six overall in that draft. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I forget. I forget he's a a second round pick. Mm-hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo went in the second round of that year. That's actually, it's just kind of funny where Johnny Football went and all these other guys fell. Yeah, and this, and this, what was I gonna say? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, no, it's okay. Like I said, it's just, it's just weird when people, like people, just overevaluate quarterbacks. It's weird, and like, oh, the small, small school thing. I'm not saying just because you went to a small school doesn't mean you're not going to be good. There's been a lot of uh, quarterbacks that went to smaller schools that, that have planned, planned out in the NFL. But when you see people do the ridiculous things that they do at these smaller schools, and that's what you fall in love with, you got to remember that competition is not what it is at a power five school. It's just that simple. Now, if you see a guy that's just making smart decisions and is accurate with his throws or doing things that like, okay, that would probably work at any level, then yeah. But if you're seeing a guy doing again Zach Wilson, Johnny Football s things, like it's just like, bro, he's doing that at the college level one. At least in Johnny Football's case, he was doing it in the SEC. So I get it, I get it. But with Zach Wilson, is like he was doing that, and he had like the best offensive line in the conference. So he had like 20 seconds to throw the football. Like yeah, I, yeah, I could do some Patrick Mahomes throws too if. If I know I got time to do this and do that, and I know the dude's gonna be open, like you see, he ain't doing that shit in the NFL right now, is he? Mm. <laughs> uh, he? He's not. He he's look, he's looked terrible. You, you know who's not looked terrible, and it's just because I, I I look I'm just looking up random drafts, and it's just kind of funny because it was a controversial first overall pick. But Kyler Murray, dude, is everything as advertised? Yeah, he's he's up he's up and down. They lost to the he lost they lost to the 
Lions this week, so that was bad. That yeah. was bad, but you know what I mean. Like people thought that was a terrible first overall pick, and it obviously is not. Like I there, think, no, I think they were more worried about Cliff Kingsbury than him. And obviously, what him was was his size, you know, because you don't know when you're when you're that small. It's like yeah, but there was people yeah. shitting on him right because he didn't choose baseball and he went with football. Really, there were people shitting on him for that. Yeah, I feel like I feel like, even Michael K was like, yeah, bro, this is what's gonna happen, like. Baseball, it's so much harder to, to be a pro in baseball. People are going to choose football. Like even Michael K said that, like, I would have done the same thing. Be the number one pick in the draft and go straight to the league or ride on a bus in the middle of, like, Montgomery for three years and hope that you get called up one year, one it day. sounds like, depressing. Like, he's even Michael K said that. And you, know, and you know Michael K loves baseball. Oh, yeah, like, he's a baseball guy. Yeah, so 12. Those, those. So I went to 2012, right? It's going to be the 10 years, uh, 10 years ago, this next draft. And you, you have a great memory for drafts, apparently. Who was the first overall pick in 2012? Andrew Luck. Amen, bro. Andrew Luck, Robert Griffin, then number three, the, the running back, Trent Richardson. And before anyone can say, see, see, Charles, that's why you don't take running backs that high. I never learned my lesson. I wanted to take Trent Richardson there, too. I thought Trent Richardson was going to be the second coming of Jim Brown for the Browns, bro. I was hype, roll tide, all that shit. And then Trent Richardson, he's, he's a weird case, man. You couldn't tell me Trent Richardson wasn't, like, amazing. And Bro, man. he's one of my favorite college running backs. But you know what's crazy, though? Jim Brown said it was a bad pick. And a lot of people thought Jim Brown was hating. And I forgot what he said, but he was like, yeah, he's not going to do this. He said the same thing, like, he's not going to do this in the league. And I guess I think what he was saying, I think what he was saying was, like, that line is so good that all that is just open field stuff. In the league, you're not getting those open field runs like that. Especially the Brown and the Browns at that time weren't that good. And I'm sure their offensive line besides Joe Thomas wasn't good because they had Joe Thomas back then. Like, yeah, he, he just was a bust. And I'm not going to lie to you. Even when, when I, when Jim Brown said, I said, Jim Brown, why are you hating, man? That's not, that's not nice. He's going to your Browns. He was right. He was Dude, right. He made that old Miss guy like tear his ACL. I was like, yo. <laughs> Like, yeah, like people like kids today look up Trent Richardson in college, man. He made a dude, he did like a stutter step spin and he made the cornerback from Ole Miss like completely just like twist his knee up. It was crazy. <laughs> like the dude was playing twister. Like that was the first time I seen somebody get shook in football. Like, you see that in basketball all the time, but that was like the first time I seen somebody like get actually shook in football. I'm like, oh, oh nah, nah, nah. Like, Reggie Bush. <laughs> True, Reggie Bush. You're right. You're right. Bob Reggie Bush, Bush I, man. That was that that was the running back. No, no, when I say when I say shook, people, that's what I mean. Michael, Michael Vick, Reggie Bush, like they made people miss, but Trent Richardson made the dude like touch the ground. I, I was like, oh what? no, Michael Vick broke people's ankles. Like that dude was different type of fast. And Reggie Bush was different. Like, but I get what you mean. Where Trent Richardson was just he because he had more of the Alabama up the middle type of offense. So you just didn't expect a stutter step. And it's one of those things where that poor guy, he doesn't want to walk around saying Trent Richardson broke his leg. Uh, Matt Khalil Vikings, the Jags. And this is a guy I was hype on. I, I, like, this is why I'm smiling because I've liked so many terrible picks in my life. And I, and I own them because not enough people own the shit they were actually saying at these drafts. They all act like, oh, well, that was obvious. No, the fuck it wasn't. I'm old enough to remember what everybody was saying. We all got it wrong. But like, I digress. Justin Blackman. Yeah. You remember this dude? Yeah. Hype. Hype. He's supposed to be Des Bryant Jr. Yeah, no, he's supposed to be the next coming of Dez. Like, in all the best ways, you know, I, I had no love for Dez in 2012. Or, yeah, 2012 when this draft was happening. But after him, the Cowboys chose a cornerback. And I remember being upset. They got the, the, the number one corner, my prospect, in the draft. No, it's not Stephen Gilmore who went 10 uh, to the Bills. It is Morris Claiborne from LSU. I was from DBU. pissed the boys got it. I was from so DBU. pissed. That the boys got him. And then Mark Barron, Roll Tide, went, went at number seven. Now, I'm trying to look 
Oh, right there it is. There it is. I was like, I, I'm, I'm overlooking a quarterback, and I was. Do you remember the third quarterback taken in the 2012 draft after Luck and RG3? Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> what team was it? The Dolphins. Tannehill. Yes, yes. Ding, 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 ding. Nice. Now, I bring that up because obviously he's better uh, – on, on his current team, the Titans, they, they take a step up with him after missing on Mariota, another sure, uh, surefire quarterback that we all thought was going to be like, you know, the, like a Russell Wilson type of uh, I didn't. game manager. I know. Uh, but the, but those Ducks teams are fire, so stop hating. Um, the next quarterback in the, in the 2012 draft, number 22 to the Browns, might be – Brett's favorite Browns pick of all time. In 2012? Yeah. Yeah, they did take a quick. Was that was that was that Josh Whedon? Brandon Whedon. Josh Brandon Whedon. Whedon. Brandon, Brandon Whedon. Yeah, that's what I meant. The Josh Whedon. Whedon. Yes. That motherfucker he got drafted, then he fucked up Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Whedon, yes. Was that 20, motherfucker Josh Whedon? <laughs> the, the 28-year-old junior. Josh Whedon, Josh Whedon is like, my oh God. <laughs> yeah, like I got drafted too. Um, bro, I remember this. And people and like props to him for getting drafted at 28 years old, man. Like, I am not hating on it on it as a life accomplishment. And it was so weird because like part of me, even then, was we just wanted to cheer for him because like you are older and everyone's just hating on you because you're 28. Like, if you're good, you're good, type of thing. And obviously, you, you the all the a lot of the hate was. Well, he's not going to be your quarterback for the next 10 years. And my whole point of this is we do this every draft. How many of these motherfuckers last 10 years? Like, ding, ding, ding. I I went back again to 2012, my point, when I was reading off names that aren't quarterbacks in in, in 2014. So just just think about that. Brandon Weeder wasn't that good. He wasn't a good pick to to, to make. But at the same time, he wasn't – a garbage college prospect. And so people are like, how did he go? If he was younger, he would have went higher. That so like that's my point. Everyone's like, oh, that's what a terrible pick. And that motherfucker was 20. He, he probably would have went first overall. No, not not this draft. Maybe third no, overall. Oh, Angela. I still met Angela came back to college because he because he would have been the Panthers quarterback. <sighs> I'm trying to look at, at the next quarterback that was taken. This is definitely like one of those dra- – oh, my God, the Giants took David Wilson with the 32nd pick. Nice. Oh, what a what, – he, he burned bright, burned quick type of thing. He, oh, he can do a backflip at the end zone. Yeah, but we're losing. Great. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Wagner went second. Dude, this is not a quarterback draft at all. Uh Denver Broncos, Brock Osweiler. Fuck that guy. I, <laughs> I hate Brock Osweiler. You know this. What, wait, I, why do you hate Brock Osweiler? Oh, my God. It's one of those things I forgot he was in this draft. Go ahead. Why do you hate Brock Osweiler? Because he's the worst. Oh, okay. That's... Because he... Refused... Good in-depth analysis, Brett. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, because fantasy... There it is. Not... He would not throw the D hop. And I'm like, bro, please, like, like Brock Osweiler, number 10 on your team. He's the best player on your team besides JJ Watt. Please throw it to him. Like, he refused to throw it to. De- like, there's two types of quarterbacks, right? There's a kind that spreads the ball out, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he sucks because he spreads the ball out. He doesn't do crap. And there's a quarterback that force feeds it to the star player, and he sucks because that's all he knows how to do is force feed it to the player. Brock Osweiler was neither. It's like, dude, like, 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 what are you doing? Mind you, the year before, the year before, D Hop was the fourth best receiver in all of football in terms of catches. I'm not talking about fantasy. I'm talking about like actual stats. He was top four in everything, and he had four different quarterbacks that year. That was like when people started realizing, like, yo, this dude D Hop is amazing. <laughs> and then Brock Osweiler comes in, and it's like. It's like, bro, like, what are you doing? Throw it to him. He like, 
he might be the best receiver in football. Throw him the football. And Brock Osweiler was like, nope, I'm just going to sit here and throw a pick. <laughs> That's what he sounds like? That's what exactly what he sounds like, stupid fuck. Here's how bad Brock Osweiler was. Here's how bad Brock Osweiler Brock Osweiler was so bad that they traded him to Cleveland and they gave them a second round pick. They're like, yo, please take this guy. And we know he sucks. You know he sucks, but you need a quarterback. He'll be your bridge quarterback until whatever draft you draft. I forgot what year it was. But just to sweeten the deal, we'll give you a second round pick. You don't got to give us shit in return. We're going to give you a second round pick along with Brock Osweiler. That's how bad Brock Osweiler was. I hate Brock Osweiler. And I don't hate anybody. I hate Brock Osweiler. If I ever saw Brock Osweiler in person, I would just go up and him in the face. No, he's six eight. I wouldn't even reach his face. He's wow. he's too tall. He's legit six eight. That's one of the reasons why he sucked. He was too tall. I would go up to Brock Osweiler and I'm like, "Hey, hey, you up there? I hate you, and I hope your Christmas sucks." And I would walk away. And I I, I cannot stand Brock Osweiler. And you know me, I hate fans that put too much stock in athletes or celebrities in general. I'm sorry. Fuck that guy. Especially like, over fantasy. This is your your biggest hypocrisy. Like moment of hip- hypocrisy of like all time no no absolutely fuck that guy like just fuck him like he's like i just no i've never met somebody who just aggravated me i'm watching the games every sunday and d-hop is open by the way i said i'm like bro he's single cover please he's not even looking his way he wouldn't he wouldn't even look at him i'm like, I'm like did he sleep with your girl or something like what is going on like look at him like please like, what are you okay doing? so anyway no, doing, anyway please. besides brock osweiler that was a random turn i didn't expect do you realize who we forgot was in this draft in 2012 who else just uh oh russell wilson there you go i like how my tone alone you went oh i got this russell wilson yes russell wilson and then in the third round, offensive guard Brandon Brooks right after him to the Texans, which is just kind of funny because I thought you could only get them in the top 10 by the way people talk about Saquon Barkley. But Russell Wilson went 75th overall in the third round. Arguably, not really, the best quarterback in the draft. And Nick Foles went a couple of picks later at 88 in the third round to the Philadelphia Eagles. Another one we would have never expected to win the ring. If you showed everybody before the draft, all the quarterbacks and said, which one of these guys is going to win a ring and it, and gave him the hint. It's not Andrew Luck. You gave him and, and two rings in these guys. No one would have picked Russell Wilson and Nick Foles. Stop. Russell Wilson was good, but he, but he was like second, third round. Good. No one thought he was going to be the best. Are you okay, bro? No, you brought up my arch nemesis. Your arch nemesis now. T.Y. Hilton went uh, in the third round that year, too. Crazy. Another fucking quarterback went in this draft. After I'm just pointing this out. Are this all in the, in the top 10? Because I, I thought quarterbacks only went in the top 10. You can only find them in the top 10. Because Kirk Cousins went 102nd right. overall in the fourth round. Fourth round, yeah, to the, to, the, to the Washington team. The yeah. Washington LLC. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, they, drafted, they drafted two quarterbacks because the one because Shanahan didn't even want Robert Griffin the third. So why the fuck they drafted they trade all those picks to get him? I don't know. The owner. Just, the owner. That's just well, that's just Washington. No, it's the owner. It's just the owner. I don't even like saying Washington because that implies like it's the entire staff making a a decision. It, that was just Snyder just pushing some shit through against everybody's wishes. Again, I think everybody's wishes is also bullshit because at the time it was like RG3 was an undeniable talent. And if you managed him better, he would have had a longer career but as a starting quarterback because he still is in the league and making money and living life. So he's, we don't have to talk to him. No, about he's, like he's, he's, he's calling college football games right now. I thought he was still in the league. No. Nah. When the hell they caught him? Yeah, no, he's calling college football games for ESPN. He's not bad. He's a little corny, but he's not bad. Well, he's always been corny, so. Right. Yeah, he's very corny. Yeah, yeah, you're right. He's always been corny. But but he's actually not terrible. He like he makes corny jokes that's like, ah, oh, it's cringeworthy, but it's still kind of funny. <laughs> it's like it's it's like, ah, okay, I'll laugh with you, RG. You know what I mean? He, you know, he's not bad, especially I think it's only like his first year doing it. He's pretty, he's not bad at all. He's not bad. 
Good enough. Yeah. Sorry. Feel better at all? No. Anything else you want to vent about before we sign off? Go Steelers. Congratulations on winning the game you had to win. You're going to lose to the Chiefs, but that's okay. As long as the Ravens beat the Bengals, we should be in good shape. So I have nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeless. My team has got a long neck running out there every week for no fucking reason to play quarterback because my other quarterbacks hurt. The one that was supposed to show and prove this year and all he's showing was he still has to prove nothing. Besides that, he could get hurt and not play a whole season every fucking year. And we're probably going to blow everything up this year. So it's kind of pointless. I didn't even watch the Giants-Cowboys game, which says a lot because I've watched the Cowboys destroy my Giants before. But I watched the first two series of each team. And I don't need to watch bad football. Like, I know we're the real fan. No, no, it's not about the Cowboys winning. That Cowboys team has a bunch of talent, but you couldn't score against us. And if that de- is a defense that is not worth keeping, I'm argue, I'll argue it is worth keeping in some regards. But if you're gonna, if the whole world is gonna tell me that defense isn't worth keeping, then this team ain't no uh, Super Bowl contender. Everybody, I hate to break it to you, you couldn't put up tw- uh, over twenty on my team or thirty on my team, then you ain't no Super Bowl contender. And we can just dead all the Cowboy Boy Nation bullshit, America's team, yada yada yada. First time back twenty years. We do this every year. We do this every year. We'll just speed this up. We'll just speed this up. I think the fucking Washington football team has a better shot at, at winning a playoff game. But anyway, or the Eagles, actually, because the Eagles, again, like they Eagles just look weird because it's like sometimes, oh, that's right, we could run the ball. Oh, that's right, we have a good offensive line. Oh, that's right, we have good two good running backs. Remember why when I said win? Jalen Hurts could be a, quarter, a quarterback in this league? Yeah, like, oh, my God, like why don't we actually run the ball more? And then it's like, ah. Uh, everybody, everybody made fun of me because I was defending Jalen Hurts. Ooh, like, oh, he wants to jump to Tua Tonga Vailoa. Yeah, that's like a lot of, you know, college politicking right there. Because he like, still was a starting quarterback in college football after he lost his starting job to Tua Tonga Vailoa in the championship game. So, and now he's starting and Tua isn't or is. I don't know. I don't watch that team. <laughs> two is one six straight go Miami I I, I was going to talk about them but they had to come back against the Jets I know it's a division game but it's like yeah that's not two is still playing huh is two is still playing yeah they're just a team I, I watch through to it as well because on you, the standings I don't really if you gave Gaskin two more running plays for touchdowns I would have won this week but that's okay I feel nothing yeah, tell me where they can find you bro I'm dead inside as well. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry uh, Chrysler. You can find me at Never for Brett Me. That's N E V A underscore the number four B R E T T underscore M E, where I will be wallowing in self pity for the rest of the holiday season. That's on Instagram and Twitter. I'll have to check the on all the socials, the underscore dope blog on Instagram, the dope blog all on Twitter. And all of our misery will be broadcasted. At least we have a bunch of nerd shit we actually will be happy to talk about. Yeah, if you're on YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. And join us next time as we continue to discuss other people's excellence. Although Brock Osweiler was everything but excellent. I mean, you're not wrong. It's just, this is weird. Why is your nemesis Brock Osweiler? You're going to make me cry. Bye, homeboy.